Okay then, so now we've learned all about React context and all about React hooks, what I'd like to do is take everything we've learned so far and put them all together in one application, which is gonna be a reading list a bit better than the stuff we've been doing so far. But what I'd like to do for this is create a brand new project. So you can see I've already cleared out the other two projects and I'm gonna create a new one by saying npx create React app and I'm gonna call this book list. So press enter to install the application. So now that's created, let me CD into that directory and then I'm going to npm start to spin up the local server so we can view that in a browser. Hopefully that's gonna appear over here in a second. Cool, looks like it's about to work, fingers crossed. Cool, there we go. So that is the dummy application that React has boilerplated for us. So. The first thing I normally like to do is create a context file. So I'm gonna create a new folder and call this contexts. And then inside that, I'm going to create a new file called book context. So this will be a context for all of the book data. Now, before we go any further, I will say this, I am gonna be moving more swiftly in these videos where we're creating this app than I have been in the past. And that's because we've already learned all the stuff we're gonna cover for the next two or three videos. We're just bundling it all together in one single application. So if you find that this is too difficult to follow, feel free to go back to the previous videos and get a refresher on those before you come back to this. Anyway, now we're inside this context file, we need to import React. And we need to also import a couple of other things. We need the create context function and also use state as well because we'll be using state inside this functional component. The first thing I'd like to do after that is export a constant which will be book context and we set that equal to create context and invoke it. So that creates our context for us. Then we're going to create the context provider. So const book context provider and set that equal to an arrow function. We're taking the props automatically to this function and then inside I'd like to use states. So what we're gonna do is store some data about books inside this state. Now what I'm gonna do is literally copy and paste this from my repo. So it's an array of books and if I paste this in, it's just two objects. We have a title property for each one and an author property for each one and also an ID as well. So that's our initial data. We need to now also say const and then square brackets is equal to this. We get two things from this, remember. We get the actual data, which we'll call books and also set books, which is the function we're gonna use to change the state. So I'd also now like to define two functions inside this component. The first function is gonna to be to add a new book to the data and the second function to remove a book from the data. So let's do the add book function first. I'm gonna say const add book is equal to a arrow function. Inside we'll take two parameters, the title and the author of the new book that we want to add. And inside that, remember, we use this set books function to change the state. So we need to call that set books and inside we need to completely replace whatever data is inside here. So we pass in an array and this is gonna be the new array of books. We need to spread out the current content of the books array into this so we don't override it. So books like so, then a comma, then a new object which will be the new book. Now we have a title property which is gonna be equal to the title we take in and also an author property, which is equal to the author we take into the function as well. So when we add a new book, we'll call this function, pass in the new title and the new author, and it's gonna take those values and assign them to these properties right here. Now we can shorten this a little bit by using the shorthand by taking away one of these, and that's gonna do exactly the same. So now we have these two properties. We also want an ID property. Now we can't hard code this to be something like four because that means every time we add a new book, it's gonna have that same ID. Instead, what we need to do is install a library or come up with another way to create a random ID. Now I'm going to install that package we used before called UUID. So first of all, CD into book list again, then NPM install UUID and press enter. And once that's installed, we can go ahead and import it at the top import UUID from UUID forward slash V1 we'll use. And then we can use that function down here, UUID, invoke that and that generates a random ID for us. So then that's the first 
function defined. Next, we'll do the remove book one. So const remove book is equal to a function. This time, we just take in the ID of the book that we want to remove. That's what we'll be using to filter out the book that we don't want based on that ID. So we'll use set books again because we need to update the data. Then we're going to say books, which is the current value, the current array, and we're going to filter that array. So what the filter method does is cycle through the books array and it performs a callback function on each item in the array. Then if that item matches a certain condition, then it will keep that item in the array. If it doesn't, it will remove it out and it returns a new array overall, a new filtered array. So let's pass in the callback function. In that callback function, we get a parameter, which is the individual book we're currently iterating. And inside here, we return true or false. True to keep the item in the array, false to filter it out. So we want to return book.id, which is the ID of the book we're currently iterating. And we want to see if that is not equal to the ID that we pass in right here. So if these are not equal, if the ID we pass in is not equal to the current book ID, then we keep that in the array we want to. OK, so that's why this returns true. Now, if this is equal to this ID, then this is going to return false and it will remove that from the array. So that's this function done now. And finally, we need to return some JSX, which is just going to be the provider. So book context dot provider like so. And then in that, we need a value property. Set that equal to an object, which is going to take the books also the functions add book and remove book. Cool. So we've created this now. There's one thing we need to do, and that is just to output the props dot children right here. So remember, this represents the components that this component is going to wrap. So now we need to export this export default and it's book list or context rather not list provider like so. So now we have that, we can go into app.js, which is over here. I'm going to delete this stuff. And then I'm just going to say book context provider, and then close this off. That automatically imported it for me up here. We don't need these things, so let's get rid of those. And later on, we'll put our other components inside here so they can access this context. So let me save this and save this for now. Now I'd like to create some components, so new folder call this components, oops, not in capitals, components. And then inside that, we're going to have a few different components. We'll have a navbar.js. Also, we'll have a new book form.js, or we could just call this book form. It's entirely up to you. Spell it correctly, whatever you do. I'm going to call it just book form. And then we'll have a new file called book list.js. That's going to list out the books. And finally, a new file called book details.js. So inside book list, we'll cycle through the data and output a single book details component for each book. So let's get rid of most of these for now. I will do the nav bar. We'll focus on that. So let's import React again. And we also want to import use context because we're going to consume that context we just created. So let's create a functional component. This will be called nav bar. And we want to use context inside of this. And the context we want to consume is going to be the book context. So let me click on that to auto import it. And make sure your semicolon is on the outside, not the inside. This returns that state object. We need to destructure what we want from this. And all I want is the books from this. So let's grab those. Um, spell this correctly as well. Books and set that equal to use context. So now we have access to books in here. And all I'd like to do is return a little bit of JSX inside this. So a div, first of all, with a class name equal to navbar. And then inside that div, we'll do an h1 for the title. And that will be ninja reading list. And then below that h1, I want to also do a p tag. And inside this p tag, I just want to output how many books we have in our list. So to do that, I can just say currently you have, and then we want books dot length, which is the length of the books array, which we get right here. And we'll say books to get through dot, dot, dot. So it could be currently you have two books to get through, etc. Okay. So that is that component pretty much done.
So all we need to do now is save it, then import it into app, or rather we can just do the tag like this, and it's called navbar. If we click on this, it's gonna auto import it for us. And there we go, voila. So hopefully now this should work. We've created the context. We've now nested the navbar inside that context provider. Inside navbar, we consume it and we output some data. So let's save it and preview over here. And we can see currently you have two books to get through, which is correct because in the context, we have two books right here. So finally, one more thing I'd like to do in this video, and that's just to clean this up. So app.css we don't need. Uh, we don't need the logo over here. We don't need the test file. And inside the index.css file, what I will do is just paste in a few styles right here. So let me get rid of code. We don't need that. I'm going to paste these ones in. And also, I'm going to give the body a background color as well. And this is going to be 5530 and 55. So all I'm doing here is colorizing the app and giving it some margin and a max width like this. I'm also giving the navbar some padding, text align center, and a background color of this purple, and then the H1 some margin as well. So if I save this now, this should start to look a bit better. So like I said, I know I've gone quite quickly through this, but I'm assuming you already understand everything we've done in this video. In the next video, we'll be carrying on with the other components, the book list up here, and also the book details.